In this video, we will discuss the problem anagrams. Now, talking about this problem, so this problem has been asked in a lot of companies, and various variations of this problem are also asked regularly. Like you can say, grouping anagrams together is one of the popular problems that is asked a lot. So, for doing this, first of all, we need to know what is anagrams, right? So, anagrams, uh, like it says that we have been given two strings A and B. Uh, both of them are consisting of lower case characters, and the task is to check whether the given two strings are anagrams of each other or not. So, an anagram of a string is another string that contains the same character, only the order of the character can be different. For example, uh, if we see act, if we see one of the strings as act, so A is occurring one time, C is occurring one time, T is occurring one time, and if you see, let's say tag, if you see tag, then T is occurring one time, A is occurring one time, C is occurring one time. So you can see that A also here, A is also here one time, C is also here one time, C is also here one time, T is also here one time, T is also one here one time. So if you will observe in this part, so basically the characters are also the same and their frequency is also the same. So one of the things that we can think of doing in this problem is we can basically think of sorting the string. If we have been given uh, A C T and we have been given T A C, so you sort them up. So you will get what A C you will get A C T here, where you will get A C T here as well. So if you sort, if you sort both the strings, right? If you sort both the strings, then you can see, and then you can compare, right? You can basically you will be given S S T R one, right? You are you will be given S T two. So first of all, you sort these two strings, up, and then you compare. If S one is equal equal to S T two, S T one is equal to S T two, then you will return to that they are anagrams. Otherwise, they are not. Now another concept of doing this problem could be using the concept of hashing, basically. So what we can do is we can use the concept of hash map, and we can say, let's say there is a word, let's say geek. Okay, so G is occurring one time, E is occurring two times. So I basically make a hash map in which I count the frequencies one by one. So G is occurring, E is occurring two times, K is occurring one time, S is also occurring one time. Now what I do is, let's say another string is K, E, G, E, and then S. Okay, so I iterate through the second string and decrease the frequency one by one. So K's frequency decreases by one, changes to zero. E's frequency decreases by one, changes to one. G's frequency decreases by one, changes to zero. E's frequency decreases by one, changes to zero. Then S frequency changes by one, decreases to zero. Okay, so that is how I can do it. Let's suppose, uh, let's suppose instead of this, what I was given was, let's suppose in, instead of this particular string, if I was given another string. So basically, I'm saying that you iterate through the first string, increase the uh, frequency, and then you iterate through the second string, decrease the frequency. If after that in the map all the uh, characters are having the frequency zero, then that's fine. Otherwise, if the frequency of the characters is greater than zero. If the frequency of a particular character is greater than zero, so that will basically indicate that the character is occurring more number of times in the first string. If the frequency of a particular character is less than zero, so that will mean that the character uh, that that the particular character is occurring more number of times in the second string. Okay. Now talking about an edge case. So in this edge case could be let's say one of the string is e e k and second string is let's say e g. So in this case you can see both of the strings are not equal, so they will never be anagram. So you need to check for the length as well. Okay. So let's try and code this problem out. So what we'll be doing is first of all, like we can have a map, or you can use a single dimensional array as well. Okay. So we'll first of all have a map in which we'll be having the characters. We'll be having the int. Let's name it as map. And what I'll do is I'll add it to the first string, and then I'll count the frequency. So int i starts from zero is lesser than a dot size. Okay. Then I will do an i plus plus. So I'll increase the frequency of each and every character. So I'll say that map of a of i. Plus plus increasing the frequency of every character. Then what I will do is I will say that int i starts from zero i is going to be lesser than d dot size, and then I simply do i plus plus, and then I'll say that map of p of i plus plus. Okay, so I'll increase the frequency. Like uh, no, basically minus minus. So I'll decrease the frequency in the second string. Decrease the frequency of the characters in the second string. Then you simply iterate through the map. So auto i is to empty. Basically you iterate through the hash map that's there. And you check that if i dot second, if for any character, if the i dot second is not equal to zero, in that case either it's greater than zero, it's lesser than zero. In that case, you simply return a false, indicating that the string is not uh, the string is not uh, not an anagram. Otherwise, you return a true in the end. That's how we do it. Let's try and compile this to see if it works. Okay, so we are getting the same output. Let's try and submit this. So we are getting this as accepted, and it's uh, getting accepted in linear time and linear like in order of n time and order of n space complexity. Thank you. Let us discuss the problem print anagrams together. The problem says that we have been given an array of strings. 
So basically, we'll be given an array which will consist of strings, and we need to return all the groups of strings that are anagrams of each other. Now, as we know that anagrams are two strings, let's say what is anagrams? If x is given, okay, and e k e g s is given, so both of them are anagrams of each other. Why? Because the frequency of each and every character is the same, right? Now, the groups must be ordered in such a way that their place in the array is the same. So you have to look at the sample test case for the example. So let's say if we have been given this example, let's quickly copy this example to understand what the problem says. And this particular problem has been asked in a lot of companies, like Microsoft has asked it, D Shop, and a lot of other companies have asked this problem. So basically, what they are saying is, let's say they give me a vector of strings. Let's say they give me a uh, cat. Let's say give me dog, cat, and uh, dog, then cat. Okay. So what I can do here is. I can observe that some of the strings are given here. So basically, how uh, like I have to do what I can see that this is string, then this is string, and this is string. All these three are anagrams of each other, right? Act is an ana anagram, cat is cat, and tat. All of them are anagrams, right? Then another anagram group is dog and uh, god. So god and dog in the order of their occurrence, right? So this is also an anagram. So basically, what I have to do is I have to Store this this group into a list. Right, this is one of the group. This is what this is group one of anagrams. Like I can say this is what anagram group one, and this is what this is another anagram group two. So basically, what I have to do is I have to store these two into a vector, and then the final answer has to be stored in a vector of vector or a list of list. So how can I do that? So how will I compare? So like in the brute force manner, if I think, so I'm thinking that if this is that, so what I do is I check it with every other string, and if if the strings are anagrams of each other, then I can do it. But the brute force approach will take a lot of time. Let's suppose I'm here, then I'll check for everyone. So this will take a lot of time. So what I can instead of doing this, what I can what I can do instead is I can write this again, and I can try to observe something. So as I mentioned earlier, right? If you have let's say if you have to check, right? If you if you have to check for anagrams, so what do we usually do? Like the first approach that comes to our mind is. That you simply sort the strings, yes or no? The first approach comes to our mind is sort the strings. So if you sort this up, so this will be what? This will be act. If you sort this up, so this will be D D G O. This will again be act. This is what? Ah, uh, this is again D G O. Okay. And now this is what? This is act. So this is this is this is uh, original array that's been given to me, and this is the uh, sorted. This is the sorted answer that I have. Now if if I if I see this is the sorted strings. So can I can I observe something? Yes. If there is an act here, there is an act here, there is an act here. So with respect to this act, this is the same. This is the same. This is the same. Then D G O, God is the same. Dog is the same. So how can I try to optimize it? So I can think of using a uh, like what I want. Uh, like I can say that with respect to this act, I'm having what? I'm having act. I'm having a uh, cat, and I'm having dog. And now you see that with respect to D G and O, the string. I'm having what? I'm having a uh, uh, god in the occurrence order and dog. Okay, this is what I'm having. And now, if you observe, what am I actually doing? So I'm doing nothing but hashing. Like I'm doing mapping kind of thing, right? I'm using the approach of mapping, or you can say hashing. So basically, what I've done is I've said that map, like map of this and this, like map. I'll create a map. I'll I'll create a map from string. Right, string will be the key there, and uh. Apart from this, the value will be nothing but the vector of strings, right? Vector of string or the list of strings, and then I can store each and every, right? I can store each and every string here, uh, each and every string. About like first of all, I have the sorted. According to the sorted, I can store each and every string, and then I can get the answer. So let us see how I'll do it. Okay, so I'll first of all declare a map for myself, and then I'll try to do it. So let's say I get the out uh, input one by one. So first of all, I get act. So I'll I'll make like since this is this is what this is array five that has been given to me. So what I'll do with it is I'll declare a temp for it and temp will store first of all act then I'll sort it so it will create it will have act. So I'll say that temp of act dot push back like uh, in the act I'll push back first of all act. Okay. Then what will happen? Then the next one let's say is uh, god. So with respect to god, what I'll say is that uh, it it sorted string will be what? I'll first of all store it because I don't want to lose this god by sorting, right? I if I do D G O it this only then I, I will lose it so I don't want to lose it so I'll create a copy and then do it so this will be what D G O okay and then what happens then I have cat okay so since I am having cat so uh, like uh, I'll say that map of D G O is equal to what 
is equal to god okay then cat so how do i have cat so if i have cat so it will be act so in act it will be stored so i'll say that act dot push back like according to the sorted uh, sorted string i'll be storing it then i'll have dog okay so in dog i'll have dgno so i'll store it here right then i'll have what i'll have tag so tag will be stored like this so it will be stored like uh, act okay so act in act we will store tag and then we will iterate through the keys of the map to show this pair this pair one by one in the final answer we store it as a vector of vectors and directly return it let us try and implement the logic for it and then we will observe further so what i'll be having is first of all i need to say that let's suppose uh, i name it as drr okay so what i'll do is here i'll have an i'll have a map for myself let's say it's it's of what it's of string and the second parameter will be nothing but vector of strings because i'll be storing the strings one by one into it so i'll have it and i'll say that for uh in my i starts from zero i is going to be lesser than arrow dot size and then i plus plus and after that what i will do is i'll say that i need to iterate so the temporary string is equal to nothing but what or i can say the key the key is not sorted initially the string key is equal to nothing but arrow pi then i will say that sort the key so key dot uh, key dot begin sorting the key dot begin like from the starting till the end and key dot end so till here i will sort and once i have sorted it so what i will say is that map of key uh, dot push back what i'll push back is i'll push back the current string that is nothing but the arr with respect to this key i'll push it back and then so once i have once the map has been generated once inside the map every string has been stored with respect to the keys so what i'll be doing is i'll be iterating so like i need a hands i need a vector of a vector string as well to store the answer so vector of uh, vector string okay and let's name it as answer so what i'll be doing is i'll be iterating to the map so auto i is to empty right and then i dot second creates uh, like i dot sec i dot first contains what i dot first uh but first contains nothing but the key right the sorted key the sorted key okay and what does i dot second contain i dot second i dot second contains things like that i dot second contains act then cat and then dog okay i dot second is kind like not uh, like tag so this is what it contains so it contains the vector so that's why i'll store like in the in the answer i'll say that answer dot push back i dot second push back i dot second so i'll simply push back i dot second okay so that is what i'll be doing and now let's try and return the answer we'll also look at the time of city after it gets executed okay so we are getting the same sample output let us try and submit this code as well so you can see that our code is getting accepted now talking about the time complexity of this code okay so like we are doing sorting right we we know that we are doing sorting so since we are doing the sorting part so for every string sorting for every string we are doing for the sorting part for every string since we are doing the sorting part for every string so what will be the time complexity for one string let's suppose the size is x so it will be x log x but what is the maximum size of a particular string so let's say the m m is there m is the maximum size of the string like they, if there are n strings right if there are n strings so out of that m is the maximum size of a particular string so m uh, m is the maximum size so m log m will be the time complexity for sorting a particular string and since there are n strings so it will take n log uh, n uh, n into m log m time right so it will be n into m log m time for uh, for uh, for doing the sorting part and since we are using a map so it will also take some time complexity but uh, the overall complexity will nothing be but this and not talking about the space complexity too so since we are storing inside a map so again it will take uh, order of n space so thank you for watching this video